Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of In Touch with Terry. How are you? Welcome back, guys. I'm super excited to do this fun ass, high energy dynamic episode with a very, very good friend of mine, um, a neighbor. We have played the field together in the aesthetic space and the beauty space. Um, he is a, a, a world renowned, um, uh, God, Emmy award winning producer, author, marketing guru to some of the biggest names in beauty, consumer goods, and the entertainment industry. Welcome Drew Plotkin, the chief dude officer, my man. Thanks for being here. That, that intro is so good. I'm wondering if you can just follow me around when I go out places. <laughs> and when people ask me what I do for a living, which I normally don't know how to really describe it, I could just say, Terry, please repeat. <laughs> Listen, I could do that. I'd be happy to do that for you. Well, thank you again um, for being here with me today. I am so excited and I'm excited for so many different reasons. One, for my tribe to really, really get to know you. Um, and two, that we're talking about something that I think is underrated and it's going to come from a different perspective, right? From your perspective, but looking at the aesthetic space, which is growing at leaps and bounds exponentially, there's probably 10,000 med spas. You, you know, I know you have investors and you have dermatologists and doctors, you know, that are using your products. I want to really, really dive into that. But I think that there is this untapped market of men's grooming and men's skincare that I cannot wait, right, for you to share your wealth of knowledge with the tribe. Um, so thank you guys all for you guys listening today. For all you women, you are not going to want to miss this, okay? Because these are the products you're going to want to carry. And for the men, okay, well, you are, you're certainly not going to want to turn this down. So you guys know that not only do I like to share my authentic journey about myself and be fully transparent on this podcast, but again, I'm always super fortunate to have such interesting conversations with good friends, entrepreneurs, and influencers in the aesthetic industry. And again, no other than Drew Plotkin. So Drew, thanks again, honey, for being here. Um, I love it. Let's dive in. I mean, I, I don't, I won't do it justice to talk about your career. Um, why don't you, what, you know, tell the tribe like a little bit about you, how you got started in your background. Well, first of all, I love that you call your, your, your group, your tribe, because, you know, one of my tattoos, the big one on my hand right here says tribe. So, um, that's always a good sign. So yes. I think, uh, <laughs> Uh, tribe is a great word. We're off to a good start here. Um, you know, I'm I'm almost the accidental uh, men's grooming guy for sure. I mean, you know, uh, I think last week I was on uh, PBS did a story uh, on myself and Durham dude, and you know we were just in Men's Health did an eight page spread, and we were on you know Miami Live, NBC Miami Live, and Fox, and and it's funny. And I I, I said you know the other day jokingly I said you know take that high school guidance counselor you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, the guy who said, you know, hey, man, you know, consider a job at Burger King, you know, at the cash register. They're always hiring and nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. I respect everyone who's working hard, but um, it, it's funny to myself even where I ended up landing, you know, starting out in New Jersey. And I won't bore with all of those details, but the last place I ever would have imagined myself would have been, you know, where I was for 20 years, which was in Hollywood, California, uh, directing, producing, writing uh, campaigns for some of the most successful skincare brands in the world and, and, you know, A-list celebrities and pro athletes and, you know, um, I mean, that's a whole story in itself. And if anyone's interested in that, my, my book just came out called under my skin and I really cover, you know, how I got from, you know, point A to, to, to here. Um, but being in the world of skincare, personal care, the beauty industry, as people would call it for 20 plus years, working on so many different brands, uh, across the board, skincare, hair, makeup, everything in between, you know, it, it kind of became a natural fit for me uh, to develop Derm Dude. Uh, you know, I was turning, about to turn 50 years old. We were in the middle of COVID. We were in California where everything was locked down. And, you know, one day I'm, I'm filming with Jennifer Lopez for a skincare commercial. And the next day, you know, we're, we're locked down and under crazy restrictions and you can't film, you can't do anything, you can't go anywhere. And we had a lot of time, you know, to think about, you know, what's next. Yeah. And I knew that life would come back to the way it was. Um, but I didn't, I, I was 
I was past that. You know, I'd been doing that whole world for, for 20 years. I'd had a very good career at it, you know, owned and operated a creative agency out in LA. And I, you know, worked with, you know, Cindy Crawford and Paris Hilton and, you know, Serena Williams and, and, you know, all the celebrities and, uh, you know, on every category, every end of it. And, and we did well. Um, but we did it for, you know, other brands that other people owned, you know, they weren't my brands. Um, but it was a good experience. And the one thing that always pulled me was I wanted to do a brand that I felt I could speak to in my own voice. And, Mm -hmm. you know, let's be real. I mean, you know, talking about crow's feet or, you know, women's ducklettes and, Mm -hmm. you know, volumizing women's hair, while it's a good experience and I learned a lot, Mm -hmm. I wanted to speak to the audience the way I speak to my own friends. I wanted to really, as I got close to 50, Mm -hmm. find products that spoke to me, a brand that would make me want to buy. And I was looking for products for my own tattoos. I was looking for products for my own beard. Um, I was looking for products for, you know, men's ball grooming and, you know, and it's a, it's a huge category, no pun intended. Um, But uh, you know, and I wanted to help play a role in destigmatizing men's grooming and hygiene and, and, and be part of saying, Hey, you know, this isn't the 1950s, you know, Mm -hmm. this is, this is today. Um, Dudes, men, we are into grooming, we are into hygiene, and our significant others are. Um, And that's why Derm Dude has really, you know, blown up. Uh, I never expected it could have been this and so fast and so big. It's been crazy. All right. Give me a hell yeah. Well, listen, the, <laughs> I want, you're so humble and I, and I love it. And I love that about you so much, but I, you guys, I really just want to reiterate that what I love about just, you know, Drew sharing a little bit of his stories that he has, he's like an Emmy nominated producer, founder of launch DRTV agency where he's created and directed again, tons of commercials he's worked with. He rattled off some names, but I don't want that to, to fall by the wayside. I know, you know, being here in Los Angeles, and surrounded by, you know, so many celebrities, sometimes it it can just be for the given, but, but it's really not. And I think this drew, it really speaks a lot about your character, your story. I love, I love that we have so many synergies when you're like, Hey, it's COVID and and you can't do your normal, you know, producing and, and, and writing and directing that you were doing with all these other lines, as you said, and other people. But I love more that you're like, I'm a guy right? I, I, I want to look good. I want to feel good. My one, right. My partner wants me to look and feel good. And what can I do? And I think that that, like you said, I love the word, how do we destigmatize? Cause let's be honest, we all don't have to talk about it, but the products that you, that you have, they're selling out like hotcakes. And this is what I talk when my aesthetic clients say, Terry, what do we do? Obviously we always teach on KPIs. We teach on what, what's profitable and, and you know, what's generating the most revenue, but also what do clients want? And could you imagine, you know, as we get into these questions with you and this line that you're carrying could help them differentiate themselves. And I think that is what's something super exciting we're going to get into today. So Drew, you know, when you were, you know, like you said, COVID, how, like what happened? What was your first sort of impetus? You're like, okay, I can't do all the, the, these producing and directing that I was doing. How did Derm Dude or the products even come to fruition for you? Yeah, but, you know, there's a saying that I had seen someone had shared it uh, during COVID, and it it was not an original saying. It's been, you know, it, it's been in different books by different authors and philosophers, and it's been phrased a few different ways. But essentially, it's the it's the saying that you know every crisis brings opportunity. Mm. Love that. And I thought about that, you know, I was looking around my office and where there used to be 27, 30 employees and, you know, we were running 10, 15 different brands. I mean, talking worldwide, very big brands, yeah. you know, with, with, uh, you know, some of them were two, $300 million a year. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, I just kept thinking, uh, you know, you can look at it one of two ways. You could say, you know, woe is me, this sucks. And, you know, this is so bad and just tread water. Or, you know, my approach has always been, uh, you know, speed up. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I've been riding motorcycles for a long time. I really enjoy it. Um, and one of the very first lessons I learned, you know, 30 years ago, taking a, a, an advanced motorcycle riding class was the guy teaching the class who, you know, I'd been doing this for years and he used to teach the motorcycle cops and everything else. And he goes, the first thing I'm going to tell you is the most counterintuitive thing that you'll ever hear, but listen, because it, 
very well will save your life one day. Mm -hmm. And he would say that, you know, there are going to be times where you're on a motorcycle and it's unavoidable. A car's coming right at you or someone blows a stop sign or, you know, there's an obstacle in the way something. And he would say the most natural thing to do is hit the brakes really hard. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, nine out of 10 times, what's going to happen is instead of smashing into that car at, you know, 90 miles an hour coming at you, maybe it'll be 60 miles because you Mm -hmm. slowed down enough and you're still going to get crushed. And the reality is without being too technical is when a big obstacle is coming at you, if you hit the throttle and swerve, you're far more likely in most cases Mm -hmm. to just literally get around it and move on and be off and on your way. And it's something that takes a lot of time and thought and practice mentally. And I did practice it and it saved my life riding motorcycles more than one time over the years. And I've really applied it to myself in business and in my personal life over and over again. And and COVID was no different for me. You know, it was all right. The rest of the world is pretty much shut down. So while everyone else is sitting there thinking, you know, okay, I'll wait for the world to reopen. (laughs) um, I I didn't want to wait a minute. You know, I was, I I started formulating, I started, you know, manufacturers were open, labs were open, all these chemists and dermatologists that I was lucky to work with for years uh, on so many other brands, the best in in the world at this, um, they were sitting home too. They were available. So I had a a really nice head start. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, I, I never took a day off during COVID, even though we were shut down for six months, I had an empty office and I would go into the office every single day and I was formulating and we started out with our tattoo line and then we jumped to our beard line and we started doing some small test marketing just to make sure that we had the product perfect, that we had the audience right. And um, when we got into balls, and I remember people saying, well, don't you want to, you know, make sure that you can build and scale tattoo and build and scale beard before you jump to a third category? Yeah. I remember saying, no, I know those are going to work. I mean, I don't know when, but I'm going to get them there. I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, looking at this as a maybe or we'll try this and mm-hmm. see. And uh, when we came out with balls, uh, I remember I was naming the products like we always do in a very funny, unique, different yeah. way. And we had our ball cream and I said, you know, we're going to call this happy sack, nut love cooling cream. And, <laughs> you know, I think 20 people chimed in and all 20 said, you know, you can't do that because of this. It's too many words. It's too many this. It's irreverent. Some people will be offended. Well, And I knew that when 20 people said don't do it, I knew it had to be a freaking good idea. So we went with happy sack, nut love cooling cream. Um, I had, I had never done TikTok in my life. I was like more scared of it than I would be of someone holding a gun to my head because you know, what you don't know scares you. I saw my six year old twins playing on TikTok one night and I was like, all right, if they can figure this out, this, you know, all right, you know, come on my, right. So we went in the next day, we went to our studio and I had a friend who just happened to stop by and I started explaining a few of our products to him in real time. And they filmed it on a cell phone and we put it up on TikTok. And I think the next day that video had a million and a half views. And by the weekend it had 3 million views. And I think that same video now, which was X amount of months ago, has 6 million views and our TikTok blew up and, (laughs) you know, then our beer channel blew up and our ball products blew up. And it's it's a good thing. It shows how big the brand um, has come so fast. And I think at the end of the day, you know, one of our, our things is we've been blunt. I speak the way that I speak. I always say I spend so much of my life apologizing for things I really did do. I'm not going to apologize for all of the things I didn't do. So we're not out there giving any false apologies for, you know, something else that's happening that we didn't do or whatever else. And, uh, you know, I like to say that, you know, as guys, you know, we often compromise when it comes to putting down the toilet seat, but we do not compromise on our formulas and our ingredients and, and delivering an outstanding product to our customer every single time without fail. God, it's just such a heart for, I mean, as much as it's like fun and funny and, you know, you sharing what, what people's opinions, I really love that. And, and you guys, I said it in the beginning, you guys know me, like I'm like the, the Gary V of the, you know, the, (laughs) of the podcast, of the podcast here talking about just pure authenticity, pure raw, pure honesty coming from the best place possible that you just want to give back and do something good and do it from a place of one, not only your experience and your credibility, right. But from a place that, of something that you can resonate with too. And, you know, for anybody listening, thinking about, oh my God, how is this going to be applicable to my medical aesthetic practice, right. Or my plastic surgery practice, or one, we, we, we know again, that men want these products in the past, right. They would pay less or not care, but they, they care. They care very much the same way us women care. And I think, you know, I want to get into drew, like when you, 
because I know you, you mentioned it started off with tattoo. So as it relates to all these places offering tattoo removal, that was a big thing for you. So when you started, and I know, again, you've worked with dermatologists, you've formulated all these products. What, what was it about your tattoos and what does the product do specifically in that realm? Because this is again, where, you know, clients, if you're, we'll talk about it at the end, you know, where you can order Drew's products. Um, what was it about the tattoo market that was leading you to start there? Yeah, I, th I think tattoo for me was safe. Um, and I know that sounds strange. Um, statistically, it's not, you know, the, the smartest or most standalone money-making category because, Statistically, I think it's most current data was that 33 or 34 percent of all Americans have at least one tattoo. Now, if most Americans or or or, or 33, 34 percent of Americans have only one tattoo, the those that only have one tattoo are not buying a tattoo mm -hmm. product. Um, they may not like it and may go get it removed, but really people who are buying tattoo skincare, they may not be as covered as I am, but they have seven, eight, nine, ten tattoos. Um, so I knew it wasn't the thing that was necessarily going to, you know, blow up a brand, but I didn't start out thinking, what's the knockout punch? Yeah. What's the single skin? I didn't even start out thinking, oh, I want to blow up the brand. I mean, mm -hmm. that was one of the things early on is that a lot of people would ask me very reasonable questions and saying, what's your two-year plan? What's your three-year plan? What's your five-year growth plan? And all of these things. And while I had some thoughts on that, I deliberately did not put my time or passion or energy into that for the reason that I wanted to put my time, passion, energy into the very thing I was doing at that time starting out. And yeah. the very first product that we formulated was our tattoo bomb, an aftercare bomb. We called it nuclear bomb. Um, now, as luck would have it, the day that we launched our nuclear bomb oh. was right around the same time <laughs> that Russia started bombing Ukraine. And, you know, again, it was one of those things where I got calls from manufacturers and printers and people saying, do you want to change a name? Do you want to do this? It could be politically incorrect. And I said, first of all, anyone who's a normal human being and is watching TV, your heart breaks for innocent people yeah. being killed. Does anyone really think that we came up with a tattoo bomb and called it nuclear bomb? Uh a year ago, we've been formulating, marketing, putting a plan together, and that we had insight into that this was going to happen. Right. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things when I say, you know, we're not political. We're not out there trying to fix the world's, you know, problems uh, that are that are beyond what we're doing. We're talking about men's grooming, men's hygiene. There's plenty for us to help and fix mm -hmm. right there alone. Um, so I started out saying, let's start with the best tattoo aftercare bomb that we can. Having been in the world of skincare and the world of marketing and commercials and campaigns, I was very upfront and always am with people. When you yeah. see these campaigns that say, you know, so-and-so traveled to the South Pacific and found this unique magic ingredient at the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> and they brought it back to all of us and met Dr. So-and-so, and together they're sharing it with you. And if you order three times that amount right now, we'll even <laughs> ship it to you a day quicker. And, you know, I get it that it's a marketing tactic that works. I was in that world for a lot of years. There's things that I loved a lot more than things that I didn't. I was never a big fan of the bait and switch and the gimmicky and the, you know, pushing people. But I've been very upfront with people and saying, you're not going to find a tattoo product out there that has a secret, never heard of, never revealed ingredient before that someone on amazon.com is going to bring to you. Um, especially to you and for five ninety nine, you know, a third of the price everyone else is doing. Um, so knowing tattoos and having been getting tattoos for 25 years on every part of my body and worked with some of the top tattoo artists all around the world, it was safe for me to go into tattoo yeah. because I understood it. And I knew that when I looked around and said, what are some of these tattoo brands out there that are selling tattoo products? I couldn't find a single person speaking about the company or in a meaningful position with the company that was actually a real tattoo collector, a real tattoo person. So it was, you know, the same old marketing fluff uh, that I was trying to get away from for the same yeah. reasons I started Derm Dude. And when I would work with our dermatologists and our formulators, it was amazing because I would get so much information from them 
but they would turn around and we'd be sitting there in the labs and they would say, now let's put this on right here and see how that feels. And, oh, look how that pops. And what do you think of this? And, you know, and I would say, okay, we as tattoo people want something that is light, that makes our tattoos brighter, that yeah. makes our skin softer, but is not greasy. Yeah. We don't want something mm -hmm. with petroleum that's going to make it feel sticky and suffocating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the majority of tattoo product bombs for years have had petroleum. And, you know, petroleum is made for diaper rash for your kids. You know, I have four kids. We used it on diaper rash. Don't use it on your tattoos. Um, you know, it's like the same thing when people talk about, you know, baby powder. And, you know, I've had dermatologists on my podcast and have worked with derms for years. There's a reason they call baby powder baby powder, not grown man ball sack powder. If that was the case, it would say grown man ball sack powder, but it doesn't. It says baby powder. So, you know, and that is why we came up with Happy Sack Nut Love Cooling Cream, because this is a night and day different product with so many more benefits for a grown man's package. It's cooling, it's hydrating, it's antifungal, it's going to help prevent jock itch, it's going to help prevent chafing, and it smells absolutely spectacular. So you can have it in a variety of man-friendly scents that our guys love, but I'll tell you, 50% plus of all our customers who buy our Happy Second Love Ball Cream are women. For and they're men. not buying it to apply for themselves. I guarantee you wow. that's anatomically not possible. <laughs> so they are buying it for their men, for their dudes. And that says so much to me and tells me, yeah. man, we are doing the right thing. We're speaking to the right people and women are right. You know, we go out and we talk to women all the mm -hmm. time and they write in and say, you know, the world has been making products for women for years for down there. Yeah. Why yeah. now is it first being started yeah. for men? You know, and, and I don't try to go back and fix the past. I say, I'm with you. That's why we came out with yeah. Happy Sag Nut Love Cooling Cream. That's why we, you know, came out with our Happy Crack Spray for your rear. You know, get your rear in gear. I mean, it, why do you not want a cool, refreshed, happy smelling crack? I mean, there's a lot of crap that goes on back there, you know, pardon the pun. <laughs> I mean, why would you not? And, and we get, you know, it's not just a party item. I mean, we get emails and posts and comments from, you know, working guys in Texas are saying, I'm a welder, man. And yeah. my, I get so wet back there, you know, and it's yeah. true. And it's nothing to a, nothing to be ashamed of. And that's what makes me so proud about the brand. And, and, and that's, you know, why I want to have some fun with it and why we do, you know, have fun with the names and, you know, our ball wash, which is charcoal activated. And as you know, uh, when you're talking about the groin area, your balls are so sensitive. So you want something that is going to clean in a good way that is calming and soothing, but not too abrasive. You have good bacteria and you have bad bacteria. You want to get rid of the bad bacteria, but you don't want to get rid of the good bacteria and the good oils. That's why we use activated charcoal among our other ingredients. We use Dioplex in all of our ball products, which is a clinically studied trademark patented ingredient, patented ingredient, which is a natural deodorizer. And that's why we use that in our ball products. And this is Balgasmic, our charcoal activated sack wash. And, you know, who doesn't want to have a Balgasmic experience when they're washing their balls? <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I look, we've been friends a long time, but I, I'm genuinely learning so much. And I think, look, tribe listeners, cause some people could be listening to this and be like Drew was saying, be offended and oh my God, but let's kind of put it on the table and let's be honest. Cause that's what this podcast is. Authenticity. Like you said, there are so many, I mean, we have vaginal rejuvenation and vaginal tightening and all kinds of products for us to be right? Nice and fresh down there. And I, I really, really love what you just said because you're like, God, this welder, right? People like working right in different types of jobs or industries. And it doesn't even matter what it is. You're right. Grooming. We all want to look and be our best selves and take care of ourselves. So I love that it can be coming off right funny and crass and these names and people have opinions, but at the end of the day, I mean, you are making, this is innovation, right? This is pure innovation right now purely talking about, like you said, destigmatizing. Let's be honest, who would not want this? So I have some other questions for you. You know, when you think about recent advances now in the men's grooming market, whether where, wherever you want to take, you know, additional products, but what, what do you foresee in the industry? 
Oh, I, th- I think for sure, you know, you mentioned it at the top that um, men's spas, man spas that you're seeing, I think that's going to grow at, at such a rapid rate uh, beyond belief. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, you know, I think at the same point, men's grooming or hygiene in general, that category is explosive. I I could quote different studies, but it's almost pointless because every study you look at these days changes week after week and is bigger than the next. But you're talking growth of, you know, into the hundreds of billions of dollars worldwide in men. And, and, And there's also a good reason for that. Whenever a demographic is underserved for such a long period of time across the board, whatever that demographic is, when someone finally starts to listen and say, we hear you, we're, we're with you and, and, and let's do this together. And I'm not trying to be, you know, absurd and suggest that myself and Derm dude, you know, are, are the genesis of men's grooming by any means. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous, but we're, we're, we're part of a community yeah. of, of brands and megaphones um, and, and, you know, people that are out there um, servicing the men's community and, and making, you know, this, this growth possible in a good way. And, and I think that that's a wonderful thing. You know, when I first started Derm Dude, one of the things um, that I said is, look, you know, I'm going to have my own gut feelings, my own opinions, and that's what I'm going to lean into out of the gate. Because if everything was a formula, then anybody yeah, in the world would it. just follow a formula mm-hmm. and you'd be living on your own private island. It doesn't work <laughs> that way. Gut feeling, intuition, um, and, and being able to read the tea leaves. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that kept coming up was scents and seeing more and more brands and more and more guys being open to different scents. Yeah. And I grew up, you know, in the eighties and my dad was a, a, a man's man, you know, by that term definition, you know, Navy veteran. And, you know, he was just, you know, not a scented man. I mean, you know, he used his same soap. He used his one aftershave that, you know, smelled like dad, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, and, you know, a lot of guys my age can remember that and they would know what I'm talking about. Like it smelled like dad or smelled like grandpa. <laughs> but you could if you had put a bunch of stuff out that it was in all these different scents, forget about it. And and I was concerned about that, even though the data was clear and I was speaking with manufacturers and looking at things. But I said, you know, let, let's, you know, let America tell us what they want. That was my mindset from the beginning is that I want to be able to provide what our customer wants, what men want. I don't want to drive it. I don't want to say you need to go here. I'm not trying to steer it. I just want to be open-minded, listen, and then move on it. And, you know, out of the gate, I mean, again, very early on, we ordered uh, a lot of unscented beard balm, unscented body wash, unscented, um, you know, uh, ball creams. Um, They're still sitting in boxes in some warehouse. I think we sold two. Uh, you know, yeah. and, and our sense is what, you know, our various sense and, and, uh, and, and I love that. And I think that that is an example of American men and women saying, this is what we want. This is who we are. Um, and I think that shows growth. It shows mindset. I, I like that we can sit here and talk about, you know, grooming below the border. You know, yeah. we just came out with our with our first men's trimmer. It's called our everything trimmer. Uh, and we, yeah. we say it's, you know, it's, it's the perfect tool for your beard, body and, and tool. So it's an all in one, <laughs> which is why we call it the everything trimmer. And I think it's wonderful that guys are, you know, doing everything from trimming your beard to your body hair to whatever length if you want to down below. And I, you know, I said earlier today to someone, they're like, well, how do, you know, most guys keep their, you know, pubic hair down below? I go, I don't know, but with this trimmer, it's up to them. They could do anything. You, you can have your hairstyle down there from hippie to the rock, whatever you like. I mean, it's anything in between it's, you know, and that's the point is, is that you have access and I love yeah. getting emails and we get hundreds of emails and hundreds of posts. And, and honestly, these mean a lot to me. They really do. When people will say, um, you know, I didn't have a dad growing up to share these things with me. And I, and I listened to your videos and I've watched your, you know, podcast and read the stuff on your, on your blog. And, and, you know, this is information that I was embarrassed to ask anyone about. And, and I get it, man. I mean, I had a dad growing up and he was a good guy, but you know, um, it wasn't like where you would have those conversations of, yeah. you know, be like, Hey man, you stink, get in the shower, you know? And if you right, didn't, right. if you, it, when you came out, if you came out too soon, you still stink, get back in the shower. I mean, it's just a different world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
or moms write in and say, you know, I'm a single mom. My, my boy is 17 years old and he's embarrassed to ask me about how to take care of those things, but I can tell he's itching down there. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, what would you say to, and and I'll, you know, email back or share so that she can in her own words say in a way that might make him not feel like, Oh mom, stop. And, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. And, you know, obviously, you know, there's just, the mass public, which are hardworking dudes out yeah. there. We have t- a big military audience. God bless. God bless our military. So many uh, people writing in, you know, my husband's overseas, my brother's overseas, my son's overseas, and, and he doesn't have anything to prevent the chafing and the yeah. jock itch. I mean, that makes us, you know, very, very, you know, proud to be able to to help. And we do provide discounted products for all military and first responders. And, and to us, that's not a marketing gimmick. That's a that's an honor that's and a blessing for right, us to good, be able to yeah. do that. Um, and, you know, athletes, you know, um, tons of pro athletes. And, you know, again, this isn't us going out and paying a pro athlete or college athletes to do anything. I mean, this is people you know, finding the product, uh, trying it and then telling someone else. And so the word of mouth, the social media has been just a beautiful thing and really validates what we're doing. I mean, gosh, I feel it's such a vulnerable place even to hear you talk about it because again, on one hand, people can have perceived, you know, notions about who this is for, right? The pretty boys, the metrosexuals. And I love that you're genuinely bringing up things that I don't even think we would consider thinking about the teenage kid or the somebody who didn't have a dad or again, people working in these different industries and you know, even yourself, like just, this is such a diversified market and right. Yeah. Who would not, who would not want it? So I, I'm, I'm loving this story from such a beautiful, vulnerable place. You know, Drew, what, um, you know, what are some reluctances that you have come across or just with men in general? And it obviously sounds like the line's doing amazing. And I think you're, your vulnerabilities, your background, your truth, you wanting to give back and do good where there's been nothing really um, is allowing yeah. people to feel vulnerable to be that way with you. But where do you see any, where do you see the buck stop a little bit where they're like, I'm not doing that or. I, I got to be honest. I, I just haven't. I mean, I, I've really not found a single pocket of resistance. I mean, certainly some products move faster than others, but w- we've not launched a single product yet that uh, that I would not say has fallen into the category of continue on. And and I mean, you know, we're barely a year into this, and we have eighty five SKUs right now. I mean, that's a great. Oh now, a, a, a lot of those are scent variations, but sure. um, you know but we probably have 45, 50 unique SKUs and items. Um, in about two weeks, we come out with our, our men's uh, two-in-one volumizing shampoo and conditioner. So we're really excited to get into the hair category. Yeah, um, we, we have, you know, at least six more firm product launches the rest of 2023. And, and that's calling it down. I mean, yeah. that's where we're sitting there saying, do we go with this or the and, and and struggling over because there's so many more areas that we want to go into mm-hmm. to really offer men that complete head to toe package, including in areas that, you know, again, I, I mean, I'm a guy, you know, here's the perfect example. You know, I found out four months ago, realized one day that I was having a severe issue with my right arm, my right shoulder. I never knew what caused it. I don't remember it getting injured. I just remembered all of a sudden one day working out, my left arm could do this and my right arm could barely, I still can barely get it up here. Oh my God. And it was a good four months before I actually went and finally met the right doctor sports medicine and started doing treatment and therapy four months in. And it's a really good analogy because now after several treatments and they're doing an MRI and all this stuff, at least I know, I'm starting to know what the problem is, that there's a treatment for it, that it doesn't have to be this way. And the question I get from every physical therapist, every doctor over and over again is, wait a minute, when did this start? And I go four months ago, why did you go on so long? And I say, I I didn't know who to ask. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what this, what, what I, I hoped it would go away. And it really speaks to the same thing in the world of men's grooming. I mean, you just don't know. There's not a firm, trusted source. You know, another catalyst, I guess you could say, for starting Durham Dude timing-wise was, you know, sometime during COVID, you know, like a lot of other people, and it's not necessarily a, a, a wonderful thing, but in some cases it's still, you know, a better scenario, is I became single again for the first mm-hmm. time in 25 years. Um, and I know a lot of people have been through that as well. Yeah. Um, and it's not an easy thing to go through. And all of a sudden, you know, while I was 
already in the process of starting this brand for tattoos, I'm realizing I'm, I'm 50 years old. Like I, I, I haven't dated in, in, in 26 <laughs> years. I, I never did that uh, online dating thing. It wasn't around when I was dating. Um, I, know. I know there's, you know, there's the whole sexting thing that I've been reading up on. <laughs> I mean, I, that all passed me by. Um, I mean, the, you know, and it was one of those things where like all of a sudden I found myself, you know, where I'd be aware of like, it's not like I was a, a slob. I mean, I was yeah. aware. I cared about my appearance professionally. I was mm -hmm. in the world of, you know, uh, aesthetics yeah. and yeah. things like that. But literally it was not for work, not for Derm dude, yeah. not for business where yeah. I'd be like, is, is, is there a better deodorant than that? <laughs> um, and, and, you know, um, Hmm. What are guys using down yeah. there these days? You know, and yeah. that's why we say in our marketing, I always, I always joke and say tongue in cheek, but that, you know, you know, you, you know, our, our ball products, you know, your visitors will be very happy um, because we take <laughs> that into it. account and we I say, you know, great it. smelling balls are a win-win and it really is. I mean, you know, so I really, in many ways had the, 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 the gift, the luxury, the pleasure of, of seeing myself as, as the average dude, you know, yeah. um, going through this process saying, what would I want? What wouldn't I want? What, what's a fair price to me? What's an unfair price? And there's products that we love that we didn't move forward with because, uh, we looked at it and said, by the time this product comes to market, we're not able to deliver this in a way that we think is going to be great for our customers right now. And I'd rather do that and get to it when we can do it the right way. So we'll never put something out. That's not 110%. You know, it's a commitment I made to myself day one and, and our customers really know that and they feel that and they believe that. And I, I don't take that lightly. I, I take the trust that we get and, and hold it very close. I love it. Um, you know, as it relates to, <clears throat> And I don't know if you can share, right, some of the dermatologists that, you, that you've worked with throughout the years and now with Derm Dude. But when we think about aesthetic practices, um, we, you and I talked about this earlier, private equity is coming in. There's a lot of consolidation. Businesses don't run necessarily as profitable as they can be and should be. And a lot of it's just a lack of knowledge or education or training. But how can since you've been so uberly successful and this is your, you know, your market, how can aesthetic practices better serve this male demographic in creative ways to reach them? One, not only so they can come in and get these aesthetic treatments if they need or should or want to, right? Who doesn't want a beautiful facial or fat reduction or hair removal or skin tightening? Look at this isn't just for women anymore, right? This is for men too. Right. And then, and then we have your beautiful line of products. My God, I mean, I'm ready to buy it just for myself right now. For <laughs> not even for a guy, because I'm single too. Um, so I, I I hear you on that. But no, but really from your perspective, like what what how do we reach these men? Yeah, you know, I I think in many ways men and women are so different, and I and I think most people agree. In a lot of ways, though, men and women are very similar, and that's where I would look for the similarities. In that, you know, men want comfort. They want to feel good physically. And by that, I mean, I don't know a guy who doesn't want or crave a massage as much as a woman does, uh, just as much so. Um, you know, so if, if you have an aesthetic practice, um, you know, what else can you offer? I mean, yes, guys are going to come in and more and more and probably do Botox and fillers and things like that. But at the same point, you're going to have guys who still have, you know, beards and they don't yeah. know where to go for a beard. I didn't. I mean, as yeah. I was finally growing out my beard and I really couldn't grow a good beard, it was patchy and flaky and mm -hmm. part of why we developed the Derm Dude line and we tested it on me. But once my beard really started growing in, I, I mean, I used to get my hair cut at a, at a salon. That was just what was normal. And yeah. finally, the woman's like, you should really be going to a barber shop. And she goes, and you should look for a place that has like a master barber who knows beards. And <laughs> it's just, you know, it's not that automatically intuitive to most people. It's And there's not a million places that say, you know, come on in. We specialize in beards. So if I had an aesthetic, uh, you know, brick and mortar for men, which I do not. And it's not a space that we're, we're at this point looking at going into. So I'm happy to speak free, like, you know, loosely what I would do is I would take into account that men are very happy to have manicures and pedicures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do. Uh, men like massages. Men are wide open to, you know, someone who can do a proper beard wash or a beard trim. You have more and more guys as the beard trend is continuing who want to color their beard and they don't know the best way to go about that. 
Um, so there's all of these different services that at the end of the day, guys are looking for information without having to feel awkward and having to ask. We don't like to ask. It's the same old joke about not asking for directions. <laughs> I mean, if ways didn't exist, if the app didn't <laughs> exist, I still would not have made it to work today. So it's just something in our DNA. Um, you know, and it, it probably goes back to high school, you know, we bust balls, we joke, it's something in like the male, you know, weird, you know, whatever it is that we do. Um, but the, the more guessing and, and questions you can remove in advance and information that you can provide and think of, you know, what would a 40 year old, 50 year old, you know, plus man, um, be looking for or open to or interested in, even if he doesn't know to ask. Okay. Love it. God, I love it. This is such a great podcast. I hope you, my tribe out there listening, that you guys are like so down with it as much as I am. A couple more questions and then we will wrap it up. But Drew, what do you think the biggest trends are in some of the areas of opportunity that you foresee in this grooming space over the next couple of years? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Look, I, I think uh, the ball category, hands down, uh, is only no pun intended, going to get bigger. Uh, it's a, it's a vital part of any man's anatomy. Um, so, um, you know, uh, there, there's, there's certainly that, and there's a million different ways that that can expand. Um, I, I think that men have so much catching up to do that you don't even need innovation. You need yeah. catching up in terms of, uh, you know, different types of, uh, anti-aging uh, mm -hmm. products, benefits, um, and education. Um, you know, men, we have to figure guys out in a way that women will, I'm not trying to stereotype, but um, we've seen this from research in the past. It's not uncommon from a woman to be willing to do a five, six, even seven step regimen, mm -hmm. um, yeah. be it in the morning or the evening. I'm, I'm not saying that's everyone. I know I'll get emails later from some people say, I only do two <laughs> products. I have six kids and I'm super busy. And are you saying I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying yeah. that there, there's a reason that, you know, brands, you know, have such an expanded regimen. Yeah. I, I think, you know, men are always going to be a bit more ADD. Um, they're not going to want to do as many steps. They're not going to want to be involved as much in the process, but they want faster, quicker, and more powerful results. So I think that's something that we're going to see more and more of in the terms of innovation, um, products that can deliver more faster. Um, you know, guys are certainly going to be very sensitive to not wanting to look um, fake or plasticky. And I'm not suggesting that anyone wants that either, but I think that guys in general have more of a hyper fear of feeling like they have been to the salon or groomed. They still want to have that, you know, um, hard male persona. Um, so I, I think that, you know, products are going to, you know, continue to, you know, let guys be guys, but be the best that you can be. You know, that's yeah. the whole thing about yeah. our brand that I've said from the beginning is, you know, we're not trying to change anyone. We're not suggesting anybody should change quite the opposite. We think that, you know, our, our dudes are pretty badass just the way they are. I, I just want to have the opportunity to provide people products that, you know, let them, you know, take care of the needs that they have, um, be who they are, be the best version of themselves. Uh, just, you know, just like I do. I mean, every single day, you know, I, I, I don't have it in front of me right now. I should, but, um, I, I can, I could not wear black shirts for years because I would get, you know, beard itch, beard dandruff, flakes, whatever you want to call it. I'd stop wearing black shirts. It was gross. I hated it. And when we developed our beard shampoo and conditioner, which we call mm -hmm. beard gasmic, go figure. <laughs> I can't go one single day without it. I mean, and if I do, someone at the office or someone in my life will say, did you not, you know, use your, your, your shampoo and conditioner today? I'm like, why? And I'll be like, you know, and to me, that's not like solving world hunger. And that's not like, you know, solving, you know, the global, you know, political crisis and, and you know, all these other issues. To me, that's a, a basic, reasonable desire as yeah. a dude to go out and not be sitting there scratching your face like you're ripping your skin off. Yeah. And I go out all the time and I see dudes with beards just sit and I get it, man. I, that was me. Mm -hmm. That was me. Um, so, you know, I, I feel good to be part of, of that solution and providing that service and, 
and I like being able to to share that and speak very genuinely with guys. I mean, there's people who write in all the time and and they'll say, you know, I have a scar on my face right here and scar tissue. I was in a car accident. I had 130 stitches. And, you know, if I buy your beard products, I haven't been able to grow any hair there. Will I be able to grow a beard? And I say, most likely not, you know, see a doctor, see, you know, yeah. you know, if you haven't been able to, and you have scar tissue and all those things, and I'll say to them, I don't want, you know, I don't want to sell you snake oil. I don't want to sure. lie to you. You know, there's plenty of people out there who will, I'm not, you know, or someone will say, Hey, I have an event coming up this weekend and I really want my beard to be, you know, twice as full and thick by this weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll say, well, if you can find a product out there that's going to do that, yeah. you know, it, it's makeup or it's a wig or whatever. I'm like, you know, measure your beard results in 30 day increments, drink more water, eat a good diet, use our good, you know, we, we have our, our mega beard growth oil and our beard growth biotin gummies. I saying, but if anyone's telling you, you know, use something today and look in the mirror tomorrow and your beard will go from, you know, patchy to Viking overnight, that should tell you about, you know, who you're looking at you know, doing business with and go the other way, you know? No, so, absolutely. um, will your skin be softer tomorrow? Will your beard have less germs and bacteria? Will you not be itching tomorrow? Most likely if you use our products, those, those issues can go away very quickly. Um, you know, there's a study I, I, I love citing, uh, that showed that, uh, in this one study that the average man's beard had more germs and bacteria than the average dog. Oh, um, well. and, and I said, so what more proof do you need than if you're going to have a beard to wash the damn thing and do it the right way? It's, you know, now that Amen. you know, you know, you, yeah. I, I mean, you have women who are getting skin infections and disease from kissing their boyfriends and yeah. partners and husbands whose beards are riddled with bacteria because they're not washing their beard yeah. with a good product. It's like you're bringing, you're bringing things that we should know or pay attention to or give a shit about, right, to the forefront but in such a way that we're just ignoring, ignoring some of this stuff. And it's, it's fascinating hearing it from your perspective. I mean, Drew, this was insane. This was incredible. I'm, I'm so honored to call you a friend and to knock boots with you in the industry and just what you've been able to accomplish. And I, I want to reiterate a few things that he said to the tribe, to the women, to the men and to the men. I really hope that you can sit with all of these things that Drew was sharing with you both from, again, his integrity, his expertise, um, his years of experience, again, being a producer and, 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 and creating commercials and on these big brands um, in the celebrity world. But, you know, you said you were doing it for, again, teenage kids, you know, military workers, athletes, um, you know, just the, the, the typical dad, like this is for everybody. And that it was coming, again, I always say such a place of love, right, that you are the yeah. quintessential um, client yourself. And that, you know, while there's some fun to it with the crazy names that, oh my God, you are solving. I always say anybody buying anything, right? People get twisted. I love what you're saying. You're not trying to sell some snake oil stuff, but people do get it twisted. And that's what I teach, right? That we're not selling anything, but if I can solve a problem and you're solving a problem and you're bringing it to the forefront. So I thank you so much for sharing your story. How can people get your book? Um, how can, how can, if clients are interested in getting your products or bringing them into their business, how, how do they do that? How do they get a hold of you? The best way to reach us is uh, dermdude.com. So derm is in skin. I'm sure your whole audience can, knows that D E R M. <laughs> and then, and then dude me uh, being the dude. Um, the book is called under my skin. You can get it on our website. You can get it on Amazon. Um, our products are only available right now on dermdude.com. Uh, we do have put them in a very few select um, outside locations that are more people that we're very close with, where mm -hmm. they have a very boutique type setting, um, because we, we want to continue to be able to control the whole process. So uh, you will not see us in, in large retail anytime in the near future. And but people will be very com, happy about that, Drew. <laughs> yeah. You know, you get a much better savings, a much yeah. better value, much better customer service. So, um, you know, at this point in time, uh, it's it's something that we want to really hold tight every single part of the process and make sure that it, it grows the way that we believe it will.
Okay, so ladies, ladies, give me a hallelujah for Drew Pocken here. <laughs> <laughs> that finally, right, <laughs> our man, our men can be right smelling just as good as we do. Um, Drew Plotkin again, thank you so much for being here with me today, uh, for the, like sharing all this wealth of information to the tribe. Such an honor and such a wealth of information. I think you're doing freaking amazing work in the industry. And I cannot just wait to see where this brand goes for you. So you guys, thank you, my tribe. Um, and if you, again, want to stay in touch with us, you know, you can find us at apexplatform.com. You can reach out to me at terry at terryross.com. Everything will be in the show notes. Uh, and again, if this podcast was valuable to you, please, 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 oh my God, share this and always leave a testimonial because your feedback helps me always be better and bring you the best of the best. So Drew, thank you again, my man. You're the best. Thank you. Great to see you again. Always fun. You too, honey. All right. that That's it, guys. It's a wrap. I will see you on the next episode of In Touch with Terry. Ciao.